Hey guys, welcome back. Episode 12 of my virtual dog training playlist. And this episode is actually the third follow-up virtual session I've had with this client. And it's a really cool segment and we do some hands-on leash work as well. So sit back, relax, and enjoy. And don't forget, if you like this video or any of my videos, give me a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel. It helps me out with this whole YouTube algorithm thing. Time Right before bed, I take them for a walk, which is usually, last night I actually went around a little block. Okay. Um, so I, I've been going a little bit further and a little bit further. Um, when I walk them separately, they're pretty good. And um, I keep them mostly on my left. Like I'm, I've been trying to be sort of consistent about keeping them on my left or at least keeping them close to me. I did remove one link from each of their collars. Good. Um, so I'll show you, I'll show you what they look like. Okay. I know it's harder, but it, it might be easier for you to see here looking right. outside with the uh, sunshine. Just w one tidbit. Yes. Pick a side for each dog. Okay. All right. right. So our, I, our, our goal, our goal ultimately is to walk them together. Right. Okay. Yeah. Um, in that case, because that was one of my questions, whether I could go back and forth with one of them. Henry, I do try and put him on my right. Okay. Yeah, ultimately you can. But right now, obviously, our goal is to have a comfortable walk with both of them. So, again, getting back to habit forming stuff is just as much for them as it is for us. So, if they're yeah. each on their own side all the time, uh, that's ideal. And then ultimately, you could always switch them up. But. Oh, okay. That's perfect. That's perfect. That's good. Um, and then I, what I, what I was doing, I was kind of using the word and, and, um, until the collars were tighter, you know, it was a little bit harder. Actually changing the collar has been great for correction purposes because it makes it a, like a little clearer when I, when I pull on it. Um, yeah, you don't, and, and you don't, you don't need as hard as of a correction either. No. Um, and, and so I've, I was just saying to Kat, I've stopped saying the word heel so much based on what we were talking about the other day okay. and just using the correction a little bit more to try and keep them walking closer to my side. Um, Henry, Calvin's very good. Henry pulls a little bit more and, and will tend to veer off a little bit more than Calvin. Um, so he's a little bit of a harder go. He's going to need a little bit more work, I think. Um, at least individually, Calvin seems to be pretty soft on the leash. He's pretty good. He stays close. He, and if I correct him, he'll immediately orient to me. Where Henry, Henry doesn't orient as specifically. So I think he, he's going to take a little bit more time. Henry, to get is he him a, focused. Little, a little more preoccupied with the environment? Yes, yes. So okay. once he goes to the bathroom, I actually try, especially in the morning when there's fewer people and fewer cars out, I try and then move into the street where he's not next to the grass. Are you doing the deliberate walks where you every 20 or 30 steps, stop and sit, that kind of stuff? I'm not, but I do, I do stop them at regular intervals to, to stop. So I, at, at any corner, I stop them to sit. And if I'm taking a walk where there's no real break in, in the, like a curb, thing like that, I'll stop them every once in a while, but I haven't been doing it that frequently. Yeah, you so do, I, I you, will. I can. Yeah, you want separate little walking exercises, even if it's not their regular walk, but just a couple of minutes a day. Like I said, even, even if it's in the front of your house, going back and forth a little bit, just so they get into that habit and, and that sit becomes more reliable when you're walking. Okay, they're, they're actually pretty good with the sit and wait. Uh, okay. If I say wait, as a matter of fact, if I say wait, They'll typically sit ex when I have them separate. <laughs> when I have them together, I have to I have to give them an, another sit on top of. Them. Thank you. You can leave it there. I'll get it. Thank you so much. Okay. All right. So why don't, why don't you show me a little walk right now, if you can? Okay. I have Calvin here. I'm gonna give. I'm gonna turn the phone around. There's Cat and. Hi, Cat. <laughs> Oh, 
guy. I said Calvin is relatively easy. Let me let me do Henry. Okay, hold on. Before you go on, hold on. Yes. Um, all right. So the screen froze a little bit, but um, can can you uh, you see me okay in your screen? I can see you. Hang on a second. There we go. Yes, I can see all you. Right, so um, you're kind of you're kind of walking like this, right? Right. I want that hand down here. I want you to relax. Okay. Ah. So if that means that you need to wrap up the leash a little bit, that's fine. Um, okay. But basically, because if you're holding a lot of tension here, so we want as loose as possible in the shoulders. And then okay. if, if we're close to them, if we have to give a correction, we can just give a little snap back with our wrist. Ah, yes. Okay. I got gotcha. you. Right? Because what's happening, you're holding up here and now you're going to correct like this. Yes. So your timing is going to be off, right? Yep. So I got gotcha. you. Does that make sense? Yes, it makes sense. I thought I was like holding it higher on his neck. That's what, but I, I think the collar is high enough. Yeah. It, I, and, and I got you. And it'll be one, one, you know, now that they're getting acclimated to the collar, they know the feeling, they know what you're communicating now. And the objective is, is just a little snap back if they get a little bit too ahead of you. Right. And if you think about how quick that happens, as opposed to this. Right. Give that okay. A try. Okay, I got it. You want me to try again with Calvin? Yeah, I do. Okay, hang on a sec. There we go. Thank you so much, Kat. I appreciate it. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Henry, let's go. The screen froze. Okay, <laughs> there you are. All right. Yeah, that yeah, that was good. So and when you're when you have your hand low like that, yeah. um, if you have to just wrap up the leash like this a little bit. Just okay. So, Cause you, you only want about a foot and a half between your hand and the dog. Okay. Oh, okay. Right. So because this will give them this kind of motion. Right. Yes. And then they'll kind of fall like in a sweet spot when you're walking. Right. Yes. Everybody. And that's, okay. Everybody has their own walking rhythm. So if we keep them on a, a shorter leash and you're, you know, you're using the correction as you need to, he's going to find your walking rhythm and almost like a pendulum is back. We want to swing in closer to the center. And okay. then if he has to poop, you could let the leash out and you have this around your wrist, let him pee or poop or sniff or whatever, get back on the walk and then keep going. And then keep going. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I, and I, you know, I've been so conscious, especially with Calvin, because he's, he was the one who was having some bathroom issues that I've been so conscious about giving him the freedom to sniff a little bit more when we start our walk. Um, but okay. I want to tighten that stuff up. Well, you, you want to give freedom later on in the walk. Okay. Right. Remember freedom equals choices. And we're still learning and teaching them what are appropriate choices. So if we're starting the walk with him zigging and zagging and sniffing and stopping all over the place, he's really, he's, he's dictating the pace of the walk from the get go. I got gotcha. you. I got gotcha. you. I was so conscious on saying I want him to go to the bathroom as quickly as possible that that's why I was doing it, but I got gotcha. you. Yeah. And I, 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 I don't think his bathroom issues are going to be impacted by you starting the first five minutes of the walk in a more controlled, deliberate manner. Right? Okay. And if he's got to go, as soon as you go outside, walk a little bit, make him sit, let the leash out. That's it. It's not like you have to yep. walk a half a mile controlled. Just coming out no. that front door, down your property line, just kind of getting, 
you know, let him settle into the walk and, and you dictate the initial pace. And then you can start giving him a little bit of freedom and leeway as you're, as you go on, you go about your walk. I gotcha. I right. gotcha. That's perfect. Okay. Yeah. yeah no, that's terrific. Yeah. Now that's if you're, if, if you, you know, once we go back to normal scene, you're going into the office or something and maybe they're in the crate for hours at a time, you know, that's the exception to the rule. You want to just run outside, let them pee real quick. That's fine. Um, yeah. But now, you know, now we have the time at our disposal to work on these good habits. All right. So we're going to move out to the street now that the, I think we have more freedom. Okay. Okay. So just have cat follow you walk, walk every, every 20 steps, stop, give him a sit. You don't need to give him too gratuitous of praise and you don't have to pet him every time. Just a quick, good boy. Okay, so I'm doing it too enthusiastic. I know you and I. <laughs> and I need training on that, Jeff. <laughs> it's, okay, it's okay, but again, we just good boy. Just a quick acknowledgement that he sat. You're happy with him, and then you go about your walk. Okay, good. All right. Okay, that's what we're gonna do. Hang on, I'm gonna turn the camera around. Okay. There we go. There we go. Thank you, Calvin. Let's go. Hey, come on. Sit. Sit. Tell her, just walk. Just walk. Boy. Just walk, he's saying. Just start just, to walk. Just go. Just go. Okay. Keep going. Keep going. There you go. Don't let him be a little jerk. <laughs> Boy. So my, my question before was whether or not there's a preferred or whether I should be using or not using a release word when I have them sit and, and, and then start moving again, or it doesn't matter. They should just respond to my movement. There, yeah. There's two ways of going about it. They, they can respond to your movement. Uh, you can also say, okay, if you want, or some people use the word free. Um, I, you know, when I'm walking my guys, you know, like if I, if I put, if I'm doing sits in the house for like feeding or other types of resource control, then they know that it's sit and wait. Okay. So Henry is a very enthusiastic push-upper. He likes his push-ups very much. Oh, good. Yes. We, he'll do like three, four, five. Calvin is much more reluctant. <laughs> Henry, come. So I think we did pretty well with Calvin. We practiced walking around the yard. Were you videoing it? No. <laughs> I have this recording. You should have kept going. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, yeah, of course. I'm That's sorry. all right. No problem. We weren't thinking about it. Okay, no problem. All right. all right. So let's see what you got. All right. So now I have Henry with me. Do you want me to switch back to Calvin? You want to? Is Henry okay? Um, who would we start with? Calvin. You let me see Henry. Okay. You got it. I'm going to turn the camera around. Okay. There we go. Thank you. And Henry's the one I'm going to do on the right side, uh, Jeff. So this is un unfamiliar for me too, a little bit. Okay, that's fine. Because I haven't been consistently doing it on the right side. That's okay. Okay. Henry, sit. Henry, sit. Oh boy. Okay. Henry, sit. Uh, bring her back to the camera so that I can talk to her cat. Um, hey. Hi. Can you hear me okay? Yep. All right, this is what I want you to do. Hold on, Sable, come. Is your um, dog's name Table? Uh, Sable. Oh, say Sable. Yeah. Okay. So what I want you to do is, because you're when you're stopping and sitting, you're yes. kind of going like this, right? Okay. So what we want to do is when we're using the train, the, the collar, we want to have two types of corrections, right? The one is that little snap we talked about. Yes. When you're stopping, because it's taking him too long to sit. 
Uh, okay. He knows sit. We know he knows sit. He absolutely so does. What we want to do is we want, when we stop and sit, we want to stop, apply the correction and say sit. When he sits, we release and praise, okay? So it's going to okay. look like, it's going to look like this, right? So if I'm walking, right, sit. Good girl. I gotcha. Okay. okay. Now she's wondering why the hell she's walking on the leash in my attic, but that's a whole other <laughs> sort of situation. But so if we're walking, sit. Good girl. See how that works? I gotcha. Release and praise at the same time. Yep. So it's gotcha. apply, ass hits the floor. Good boy. Yep. Okay. So it's a different type of correction than the one we do on the walk. This is right. kind of like a, so this is where, when you're at the end of a, you know, when you're at the end of the street, you know, you come to a curb or a crosswalk, stop, good boy. Okay. And then we walk. Yep. Okay. okay. So give, give that a try. Okay. Got it. All right. Thank you. Henry. Ready? Okay. Good Okay, tell her to stop. Stop. She jerked a little. Apply and hold the correction until his ass hits the floor, then release and praise. Don't jerk. Hold. Apply and hold. Hold it. Apply and okay. hold until his butt's on the ground. Yes. This is gonna, this it's okay. Is gonna, this is going to take Chris practice. Sit. No, it, it, you're going to be surprised how quickly you get it. He's a Henry, sit. He's so funny. Oh. <laughs> Hysterical. <laughs> okay, walk towards cat. Walk towards me. Go ahead, go. Just keep going. There you go. Oh boy, okay. What a dick. <laughs> I love him. <laughs> Good, excellent. He's a character. He is. Henry Pitt. Good boy. Okay, let's go. That's good. You you caught yourself. Good. Okay, so she still has that arm hold. She's still holding that arm up. She's still holding the arm up. Keep it that. Remember, the whole purpose. It's it's got nothing to do with the dog. It's to make sure that our shoulders are relaxed. Because uh, if our, if we hold tension up here when we're walking, we're communicating that, right? So we we want to be as relaxed as possible. So we're just again, taking a walk. Right. I so yes, just think flow. You want to flow with him. He think rhythm. It's all about the rhythm of the walk. I, and okay. not that I could dance, but if I could, I would want to be good at it. Right. So, <laughs> yes. But if we're up here, we're rigid, we're stiff, we're not fluid. So right. we want to, so you, you might have a little too much leash. Cause you know, I mean, you might have to, again, you might have to go a little closer with him if you want, but, oh, you have a handle. So that might work for you. Yeah, and I'm getting another one of these leashes. Okay. It'll be here next week. So That's that good, and that'll give you a static distance. Yes. Good. Yeah, and that, that it actually works fine for where it is. Perfect. Okay, let's go. Now, you barely applied the correction that time. You barely applied the correction that last time. Come on! Okay, let's go. Okay, so probably a little bored right now, and he's also he's just, bored. Um, walk towards cat. Walk towards me. Go ahead, go. He has okay. two options. He can follow you, or he could follow you. Yeah. All right. You have any treats on you? Yes. Give him a couple of treats right now. He's like a boy. Yeah. 
So uh, obviously, you know, we're we're pushing him a little in the, in the interest of we're having a session, right? Right. But if you if you're doing these exercises and you find him to get a little more resistant, you have to kind of trust your intuition as okay, is he being Henry and just being a little bit of a jerk and we're going to work through it? Or is he done and should we end the session on a good note so we don't frustrate him? Right. Okay. Does that, does that make sense? It makes sense. And and to be honest, most of the time when we're doing it, like a, a lot of a lot of the walking practice is happening during a walk. Perfect. So they don't get as bored. Like in right. the backyard, it's different for them. Yeah, you're Even walking playing in the square. In the back, yeah, <laughs> yeah. And you you can see I don't have the hugest backyard. So even when we come play here, like I throw the balls and stuff like that, it's not a big yard. Yeah. So so they they tend to wind down, you know, 10 or 15 minutes, and then they go into that rough play, which we're going to get to. I'm going to okay. send you videos and stuff. We'll, we'll do a separate session on that. Okay, good. But, um, but then that's when they may devolve into sort of that rougher play where they're playing with each other. Okay. But in the beginning, if I throw the ball and, you know, squeaky toys and stuff like that, they'll run. It's just that big. So the walking part of it is typically happening on walks and they both of them are typically pretty good on walks okay. separately. Right. So, so it's just, I, I want to make sure they're oriented to me and Henry is definitely more resistant to doing what I say. Yeah. And I think he's just a good time. You know, he's a, he's a cutie pie and has probably gotten away with, his whole life he's he's just cute and fluffy and you know he licks he, your face and he falls over backwards and you rub his belly and he's you know he's that yeah. dog and you know some dogs require different types of motivation too so okay. he he might not be as readily motivated by food and other protocols than calvin yes you know, it is that you know dogs have personalities and they're individuals just like we are Oh, they're, these two definitely have different personalities. And I think I told you that Calvin, I feel like he's much more res responsive to the voice of authority. Yeah. He like sort of looks at you. Right. Henry will, Henry will do like roll his eyes at you. <laughs> That's the difference between them. They're very, they're very different. Right. Okay. okay. So I was saying to Kat and I, I don't, I know Kat's going to have to get back because I know she has, she has work today. Okay. Just got to get back to work. Yes. And I don't, I don't know what your timing is, but it is quarter to quarter to one cat. Um, like I would like to, so what I do now, I, I was telling you, I walk them separately morning, midday and evening. And then at nighttime before bed, I take them together and we'll do at least about, um, you know, a, sort of half a block down. And then last night I actually took them on a loop around the block together good. because um, I was able to walk them in the street too. They are much better walking in the street where they're on either side of me and we just walk. Okay. And I'd love to expand that a little bit, maybe in the, the morning walk, which of course they're both anxious to get out in the morning to go to the bathroom and right. you know, the crates and stuff like that. Um, is it too soon you think, or should I do that judiciously or? No, that, that, yeah, exactly. It's a kind of a game time decision, depending on how it goes. Now, keep in mind, the middle of the street, there are fewer distractions. Yes. There's That's why it's to, easier in the morning and at, later at night there's to do. Less to smell, no leaves, no pee that they're inspe you know, inspecting, no right. poop that they're looking at or marking, right? So the middle of the street is, is a completely different environment than the sidewalk. Yes. But is it good to start out that? I mean, I, I feel yeah, like as, it's good to practice there anyway. Absolutely. Yeah. If, as long as it's manageable, we don't want to, if you feel like if you're under the weather a little bit, um, yes. whether you're not feeling well, let's say you sprain an ankle, you don't want to walk two dogs because you're going to, you don't think you're going to be, but you're going to, you're, you're going to be at a disadvantage. Your energy is going to come through and you might, you know, it might be counterproductive. So you want to make sure you're on top of your game when you're, when you're starting this. Right. Okay. All right. So it, but it also doesn't hurt if I do it like one morning and the next morning I walk them separate. Like none nope. of that hurts. It's just you're building the, it up little by yeah. little. And, and you're the boss. You say who you're taking. Right. That's true. They don't. They know already. You know, yeah. and I get it too here at my house. If I take one out, I get the look. 
you know, <laughs> or they get excited and realize only one's going and I get the look where, you know, it happens to all of us. I don't always walk yeah. them together. Sometimes I just like to take them, you know, partly because I'm freaking working dogs all day. Sometimes I just want to go for a stroll. Yeah. And uh, incidentally, that's important for them too. Like you could start leaving the house, go and get on a structured walk. If you just want to go for a casual stroll somewhere and kind of put the training off to the side, that's fine too. As long as you could always bring them back to you if you need to. So if you're giving them a little more freedom and they get a little too zigzaggy or um, non-compliant, you could always reel them back in, you know, do a every 20 step stop and sit, every 20 stop, stop and sit, and then just go back on a casual walk. You could always bring them back. But it's, okay. as much as we want to make sure that walking is good, we also have to acknowledge that it's important for them to be as free flowing as possible at times so they can sniff, inspect the environment, be dogs, experience the world. Yes. And I'm going to start, I mean, I had mentioned this to you, but I'm going to start taking them to the lake. I took them up there just, just uh, for the day for a couple of hours last week, but probably if not this weekend, then then in the middle of the week, I'm going to take them up actually f and stay overnight. I got travel crates and I'm, so I'm going to set up crates and stuff up there. Um, so that's part of what I want, like I want to do. And, and so I'm really thinking through, I'll probably schedule something with you sooner rather than later, Jeff, so we could talk about the play, but also just so I can walk through with you the best way to deal with them when I get them up there, because they're going to want to go swimming. I know they want to go swimming. They wanted yeah. to go swimming today. I brought them there and I didn't let them go in. And they were a little, <laughs> they were a little upset at that, but I have to do that one at a time. I don't have a fence or anything. It's like a, it's a lake. It's, you know, free flowing. So. Gotcha. Um, all right. So I'm going to practice this. Okay. This is awesome. Um, is there anything else you think I should know? Like, I'm trying to think if I have other questions for you. But um, No, but I did want to, I don't know if I mentioned this. I may have mentioned it before, but we're, we're friends on Facebook now. So if you send me video, if you yes. send, they, the, yeah, send it through Messenger, because I get better quality through Messenger than I do text. Yes. So I can see. And even if you're out walking by yourself with one of the dogs, yes. um, you know, even if you're, you know, if, you, if you're coming across a little thing, just if you can take your phone out, even if you just have video on the dog, like maybe they're preoccupied with something, you could always take a quick thing like that too and send it to me as well. Um, anything in the house, if you see them getting a little rambunctious, get that phone out, take a quick screen, you know, a quick video, send it to me. This way I can kind of see what's going on. And then whenever we talk next, we could always chat about it. Perfect. In the house, they're gen I don't, I don't let them actually wander too much right now. Right. So I'm not keeping, them a ton of freedom in the house i you know i had before but yeah um i'm keeping them principally in the room that i sit in and the cats come in and out which is good and then i uh, like I'll, I'll make sure they I, I actually bring them out and make sure they pee before i let them loose in the house because cal that's when calvin was if i didn't if i wasn't conscious about it yeah that's when we'd go to that spot right um i haven't been doing that thing i did it once having him eat someplace else but he's so enthusiastic about running into his crate yeah that's okay that, that i don't know that he how he would feel if i drag him back out of the crate he's like looking at me like wait i'm so good look at me i'm sitting <laughs> here I'm waiting for it it's so good um so i don't let them actually wander too much in that's the fine. house okay um at night before like at, at sometimes i've been working a lot but after after work sometimes we'll go out and sit and watch tv and that's where they they can get a little a little you know they always like to play with the same toys right that's all they want if one has a toy the other one wants that toy, <laughs> and yeah, toy yeah. Specifically. so i'll i'll probably take a few pictures of that okay and then if you're doing little sessions in the house that's something where you could take video on your own just kind of prop your phone up somehow Yep. Do some little sessions, send them to me, and I could do further critique that way as well. Perfect. Okay. And I've been taking the video of them playing in the yard sideways, right? You said that's yep. easier for you to see. It. Okay. Yes, exactly. Do that. Yeah. I'll do that as much as I can. Okay, cool. Fantastic. All right. Um, anything else? I think that's it for right now. Okay. Um, I'm going to practice this. I'll probably, I'll, I'll, I'll probably just pop back to you and, and schedule something, like ask you to schedule something probably for maybe Monday or something like that. Okay, but fine. this helps me practice. And I may ask you a question or two, but yeah, this helps me course. practice. One of the big things for me was whether or not I should 
consistently, even when walking alone, walk Henry on the right, which I clearly should. Like, okay. Call me later. Thank you so much, Kat. Bye, Kat. Bye, Kat. Bye, bye. Um, yeah, that's just for, Thanks. For, for now, we want them to have their own side. It'll just be easier for when we start walking them more often together. Right. right. Yeah. Yeah, remember, yeah that was like my. Yeah, walking on the left side, that's just like a competition heel thing. Like, yeah. I don't care what side my dogs are. In fact, historically, I always have my dogs um, away from the street. So they actually, even when I walked them together on the same side, like I would always be on the street side of the sidewalk. They would always, just because I'm, you know, for safety reasons, um, you know, but as far as if you got big sidewalks and a lot of grass and stuff, you're fine, but. So we we don't always really. I know. Appear. And here, I always feel a little bit bad that they're on the actually on the house side because some people get upset if they're I going know. to the bathroom. Yeah, but, um, and that's okay. Um, I mean, it's it's fine. I mean, you, you're Bergen County, so you pretty much have sidewalks and grass before the street, so you have that little bit of a buffer. Yeah, and I and I, I'll be honest, I have been walking. Calvin certainly, I've been walking on the left side. So he's, he's been going and, and because I want him going to the bathroom, like I just want him going to the bathroom. Yeah. I haven't worried about it too much. Henry, I've allowed him to go back and forth on the two sides. Um, but I'll just be consistent with him now and keep him on the right. As long as, as long as you're allowing it and he's not zigzagging. Right. We don't yes. want him initiating or picking and choosing right now. The movement, right. Well, I'm yeah. just going to keep him now on the right. So okay. that'll, that'll make life easier for, for me also. And I think that'll make it easier when I take them out together. Yeah, and also, because remember, we're talking about walking rhythm, right? So when yes. we're walking both dogs, right? We're getting into our walking rhythm together. Yes. So that's why it's a hand position and shoulder, not having this going on. Because now yep. we can just walk as casually as possible and they'll find that sweet spot with the pendulum. That's perfect. Yes. And that's a harder, I, honestly, that's, that's Calvin is a little easier on that. And I think Henry did really well, by the way, Yeah. today while we were, what you were seeing and some of it may be the fact that we're in the yard and, he's, <laughs> and yeah, you know, low distraction, always right. got to start with low distraction, right? So, but, but I'll keep that in mind. It's as much as anything, it's for me to practice. Yep. And I think that'll help me practice actually. Absolutely. Awesome. So. All right. Go make sure the septic guys are doing what they need to do. <laughs> Thank That's you. Important stuff. I have that at the lake, not down here, but at the lake, I'm always worried about it. Yeah. I'm not used to it, but I'm getting there. <laughs> I know. I All know. right. Keep me posted. Send me any video you have. I absolutely will. Thank you so much, Jeff. Okay. I'll see you soon. All right, take care. Bye. Bye.